I guess we can move on to dense nets. Dense nets are a generalization of the ideas that you saw for residual connections. Any questions about dense net? So the question is, can you explain the growth rate one more time and where it comes into play? Yes. So let's take a look at dense net, the architecture. When you want to go from this layer in a dense block to the next one, you have one, two, three, four, five, six channels. But when you want to go to the next layer, the input to X2, you're going to have uh, one, two, three, four more channels. Then the next one is going to add four more channels. The next one is going to add four more channels. And then you are concatenating them channel-wise. It's as if you have a book, and then you're adding more pages to your book. But then each chapter of your book, you don't want it to become too big. And if it becomes too big, then the computational cost grows by the more layers you have in your block. One way to control that is to say each chapter in my book should have only four feature maps or 12 feature maps in it. So that's going to be the growth rate. And how, how does it grow? If you have L layers in your block, in this case, you have one, two, three, four layers. Actually, it's five layers. It's going to be five minus one is going to give you four. Four times 12 is going to be the input to the next block. So it's going to become huge. It's going to become four times 12 plus K0. In this case, K0 was one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be 12 times four plus six. And K is a way of controlling it. Each number that you add here, if you change 12 to be 13, then that's going to grow a lot. Okay. Does that answer your question? The first one. Okay. Let me see. The other question on the chat, it says, do the convolutions between blocks also add layer that K doesn't account for? Uh, feature maps? No, it's not going to add any feature maps. The convolutions are going to uh, output these many feature maps. And that's what you're controlling. It's going to be K. But then as soon as you concatenate them, the input to the next convolution is going to have more features. It's going to have more channels. But the convolutions are always collapsing it into K, in this case, 4. And in the actual case in the paper, it's going to be 12. Exactly. So K is going to be 4 here in this figure. So there is a comment in the chat. There is a total of K times L minus 1 times L divided 2 feature maps. So what are you thinking? You can unmute yourself and what is your thought process for that number? Um, first, I'm supposing the K0 is the same as K and just considering K as a scaling constant for, for other feature maps. And um, uh, between other, just con just imagine other feature maps as a, like a node in the graph and they're all densely connected and there will be the L minus one times L divided by two edges? Uh, not really. So what you're doing is not combinatorial. I guess you're having L minus one times L because you are thinking it is combinatorial, but it's not. What we are considering here is what is going to be the input size to this convolution. Forget about bash norm ReLU, there is a convolution here. We are thinking about the input size. And the input size is going to depend on what is your L. In this case, L is going to be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. L minus 1 is going to be 3. So you have three of these, 1, 2, 3. And then you're concatenating them together. It's going to be 3 times 4, which is going to give you 12. And then you're adding 6 more to it. So it's going to be 12 plus K0, which is, in this case, 6. So the input size to this convolution is going to be 18 feature maps or 18 pages of a book. And then the output is going to be 4. But when you want to transition from one block to the next block, your L is going to increase by 1. So now you have 4 times 4, 6 is going to be the input to this transition layer, which is just a convolution, one by one convolution. And that's going to give you, after the transition layer, you're going to get K0 outputs. 
So no, it's not combinatorial. It's not uh, L times L minus one. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Did I answer all of your questions? Did I miss anything on the chat? Okay, perfect. Any other questions? So the only catch is this concatenation, which is just increasing the number of input channels to your convolutions. And K is going to be your growth. And K0 is going to be four times K. These are coming out of your transition layers. Then you're going to have different capacity, dense net 121, 169, 201 layers, and 265. And then you might think that this is costly, but actually in practice it is not. It's actually an efficient architecture with less number of parameters, and you can control the number of parameters using a growth rate. Than a ResNet, you're getting better results. Same thing for your flops, the compute. Okay, any other questions from DanceNet before I move on?